everyone I'm so glad to have you here on my channel I am Nikki of Nikki Hearts Cards and this is my channel we are going to start part two of the stencil series today so we are going to be looking at ways that we stretch our stencils ways that we can use our products in our craft room more effectively and for more things so that we don't feel like we're constantly having to buy something we are going to be using four stencils today. You do not have to have these exact stem stencils, but we've got some stripes, kind of some flowy drops, some dots, and one that says happy birthday. So we're gonna use those to create five different techniques on cards. And I'm gonna pop those cards up and we kind of show you in my hand, so bear with me. If you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit the like and subscribe. And also, if you haven't seen the first part of this series, make sure that you do that. I will link it at the end of the video. So we are gonna look at creating some awesome texture on our cards. Here's one of our cards. Of course, I will show these again during the video, but I just want to give you a general idea. We're kind of going with the theme of pink and purple today, and the reason that we did that is because I did a community um, poll asking, what colors do you want to see in videos? And really, we don't see purple a whole lot, so we're doing purples and pinks today. So everything coordinates. And then we're also going to use a little bit of solar paste to show you how that works with embossing. And more backgrounds. I don't know if you could see this one as well, but trust me, you will get a good close up. So we're going to be doing all those things today. I want this to want you to know this will be a longer video. It will have chapters in it if you're looking for a specific technique, but I appreciate your support so much. Make sure if you're looking for products that you go down to the description and I will have all of them linked there. So let's get right into this fun, exciting video. So we're going to start with embossing paper with a stencil and I'm going to be using this feeling dotty stencil. I'm going to show you it on different types of paper and I'm going to show you how to build the sandwich. This is the Spellbinders plate system and here is how we're going to build an embossing sandwich for a stencil. A is the platform base, then it has a B which is platform top, so I'm using A and B. Then you put your stencil down. So we're gonna add the stencil followed by the paper that you wanna use. We're gonna start out with white paper just to show you this process. And think of building this and if you get an impression but you want the impression to be deeper, you can always add layers to this. And if you have different plates, you can play around with what layers you want to use. But for this specific plate set, what we're gonna do is we've got A, B, the stencil, paper and now we're going to add E which is the embossing mat. It's flexible um, gray plastic and then on top of it I'm going to do one more thing and that's add the D adapter plate. So we've got A, B, stencil, paper, E, and D. So here's what happens once you run it through. Look at that amazing impression. I will list this in the description so you don't have to keep up with these plates, but here's what it looks like running it through like I did. Now I'm gonna add a shim, which they actually include with this pack, and I'm gonna show you what a deeper impression looks like, and you can decide which one you like the best. So I'm adding the F, which is a shim, basically like a little thin piece of paper to give a little bit more pressure to this impression. And here's what this one looks like. I'm gonna compare the two and hold them both up for you so you can see the difference in adding that shim and not. Because if you're just looking at it, it looks similar. But there is a difference. Can you tell the difference in those two? The one on the right has more pressure, so it does give you more of an impression and it's a little bit more obvious. Here's a quick look at it on black paper. This stencil was new or had a little bit of something on it, so um, when I ran it through that black paper, you could see little pieces of paper and just residue so I'm just using a microfiber cloth to wipe that off when you're using a darker cardstock like this sometimes you have little pieces that you don't even know are on your stencil and so you have to wipe them off and a microfiber towel like this works perfectly fine so here's what it looks like in the black and we'll use these to make cards before the end but look at the silver Oh my goodness, here's what I did with the silver, and I'm gonna show you several cards. I love using the embossed metallic paper as a nice accent on your card. So look at this one. This is one that I completed, and I did that embossed stripe across it with an embossed white background. 
so lovely. I just feel like that really looks amazing on a card and it really highlights the fact that you've embossed the background. If somebody doesn't really notice the white, once you put that metallic there, it looks so good. Let me show you another card that I did this on. Now on this one, I used some matching cardstock that black and white dot cardstock really emphasizes the back as well now let's look at one that's more of a masculine version of this this one i used a geometric stencil and then did that same metallic stripe across the middle like i did with the polka dots and look at how good this looks i love this as a masculine card so it's got lots of uses it's a great way to use your stencils and here's the last example. This one I just did the background, but I actually did some stenciling in the middle with the colors. So it just highlights that background again and another masculine card example for you. So let's move on to our next technique. So this technique, I'm gonna add ink blending and then I'm going to emboss it. So I'm gonna create an ombre look with some fun Catherine Pooler inks. One thing I love about creating an ombre look in a set like this is that you can count how many lines there are on this and make sure that you're going approximately the same each time. So I did about three lines per color and then I'm fading them in. So we used Glam Flirty Fuchsia pucker up and be mine as the colors i will make sure that all that is listed in the description for you but i'm going to send this through and i'm going to have it already ink blended then i'm going to emboss it so i'm going to keep everything lined up like it is and just raise up the letters so I knew that I was going to do this. So I've got some pieces of tape that are holding the edges, but I've also taped the front of the stencil to the back of the paper up at the top and bottom. I am going to wipe this stencil down a little bit just so I don't make a huge mess on my ink platform. So I'm just using a paper towel and wiping off the excess ink there. Now we're going to send it through. We did do the shim with this one and I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'll try to get you a good angle so you can see. It did get a little bit on my shim there, but I can wipe that off pretty easily. Let's look at this from the side and see if you can see how raised up it is. It's got a nice impression and you see on the back, I think you can tell better on the back that it's raised up, but a really nice look. Here it is closer. I think you can see that, but it gives a really nice look to the card. And of course, I'm going to put all these cards together at the end. So if you want to see how they turned out in the final, I'll have final pictures and we'll have final cards. But let's move on to our third way to do this. So for this card, what we're going to do is we're going to create an area of ink blending. We're going to splatter it, do all the stuff we want to do with ink blending. Then we're going to run a stencil over it to create dimension. I'm keeping with the same color family, so the same colors that I've used when we ran the stencil through after ink blending, which is Glam, Flirty Fuchsia, and Pucker Up. I am using on this one, I actually, instead of taping off the edges, I used some Gina K masking tape and die cut the center rectangle just to make it easy so I didn't have to tape up and keep everything even. This ink blending, I'm gonna make sure I do a good job of the ink blending because it's going to be seen. Our next one, we're gonna use some mixed media things over our ink blending so we don't have to spend quite as much time on them. So once I've got the ink blending laid out how I want it to be, which like each line just being the right color, I'm going to go back in and make it darker because if you know anything about my card making, I love bright colors. So I'm going to create some really dark bright colors and then we are going to splatter this. I'm gonna use my water bottle that has perfect pearls mixed up in it just to give this a little bit of shimmer. So um, if you'll see, I'm going and adding that pearls and it looks really nice on this. So we're gonna need to let this dry and, and that's actually a debate. Some people run their stencils through the embossing mat when they're wet and some people, they just barely wet the stencils and some people do it completely dry. I usually do it completely dry and the reason is I've never had my paper tear or anything like that so I don't see the reason to add water to cardstock um, because I don't want to get water drops on it. I don't want that kind of thing. So I think that it's perfectly fine to do it dry, but you do need to play with your machine and make sure you've got it the way you want it. So I'm using that same happy birthday stencil right here and I ran it over here. Now you're gonna have to look at this from an angle to see it, but do you see that beautiful impression of happy birthday all over this card? 
It looks so cute. I cannot wait to decorate this card. But what you're going to love even more is wait until we put a mixed media paste on our second version of this. And I think you are going to love it. For the next technique, we're going to add solar paste to this panel. So I've taped off another panel, done a general ombre look like this, and then we're going to add solar paste. If you haven't used solar paste before, let me explain to you how it works. We're going to use the one called Golden Hour. So its mix has a golden color to it when you put it on anything that is dark. And I'll pop up the video that I have on solar paste because I have an entire video on how these colors work. But generally, if you're going over something dark, it's just gonna show it's whatever the mica is in it. In this one, it's a golden color. So it's gonna kind of blend. You can actually pick up some of the color. You'll see that it picks up some of the color off of this. And please excuse my terrible blending right here. I'm doing the best I can. Um, sometimes I have trouble just blending a flat surface, um, especially if my thing's not working great. So once I get this on, I'm going to let it dry. And with solar paste, you want to make sure that you've got it on and you wipe off your tools because it is almost like a plastic covering. It definitely has some um, kind of plasticky type elements to it and it will just dry so fast. So get it done quickly and then move on and clean up your tools but you're gonna understand why all that extra effort is worth it with these stencils. Okay, so I've done that same happy birthday stencil. I just kind of went with that one. Look at this. Look at the difference in adding a paste with that stencil. It really makes it stand out. I just, I think this was one of my favorite ones. I couldn't believe how awesome that was. I did get a little bit on the top, but that's really easy to get off, or I can just trim the paper down. So here's the difference. You can definitely see the happy birthday on the solar paste easier, but that other one, if you hold it close, you will see it. So for our last technique, knowing how well you could see the detail with that solar paste on the previous one, I decided that when I ink blended these little flowers that I was gonna add solar paste. I did this with my fingers because it just seemed easier. I could have probably done solar paste and then cut them out, but I'd already, I thought I was just gonna use them ink blended. So then when I decided, ooh, I definitely need that solar paste to show off what the stencil is going to do the, to these die cuts, I went on and added that over it. And stencil paste dries fast. Like I said, you want to get this done. You want to get your hands cleaned up and get your mat and everything cleaned up as fast as you can. So obviously I'm speeding up the camera, so I didn't do it quite as fast as this, but um, it is something to do quickly. And then it dries within an hour. You probably could do even less time, but I did give these an hour to dry just to be safe. I'm intentionally keeping the pretty abstract flowers with generally reasonably big components and no other impressions from the die. So this is just a die that cuts around the shape that helps with what we're about to do. So these leaves, I just did ink blending. I didn't add the solar paste over them so that you'll be able to see the difference in ink blended versus solar paste right next to each other because we're going to put these leaves and flowers together. But first we're going to do our last technique on them. I'm just using two colors on these. So I did melon ice and then I'm gonna do martini around the edges to give it a little bit of dimension. Now that's how they look at the end. Let's add more detail with stencils. We're gonna use the dots and stripes. These are from Altenew. I'm going to keep leaves with stripes and I'm gonna do dots on the flowers. And remember those flowers have solar paste on them and the leaves are just ink blended. Okay, let's look at these. So I'm taking the die cuts. I have embossed them with that wonderful polka dot stencil and look at how amazing these are. I kind of pressed these into this. So I'm gonna have to peel it off with a tweezer. Um, but look at how beautiful that looks. So you can see the difference in the color because I did ink blend them different colors so I can layer these flowers. But how cute are those flowers gonna be with little polka dots on them? I think it just goes really well with that abstract theme. Now let's look at what our beautiful leaves will look like with stripes embossed into them. And here's how good the leaves look. Now remember the leaves are just ink blended so it's not gonna be as obvious as the impression that is made with the other, but it's still there and it gives a different look and I just love them together. Look at how beautiful that is. They're gonna be such cute, flowers. Okay. And I think it's funny that those flowers match one of my fingernails, but anyway. <laughs> 
So we've made it through our five different ways to use embossing on these amazing stencils and this is dry embossing. This is the second part of our series and of course I'm going to go over these final. I'm going to show you a few details that I did to the final so still stay tuned. Make sure that you are a subscriber and you've hit like on the channel because there will be more um, stencil videos. This is the second in a series so make sure and go back and watch that first one. This is the first card that we did where we embossed the background, we embossed that metallic silver and then I added some flowers from the end. Those were just some leftover ink blended flowers that I had from the other project and I think it turned out great. This is the card with the black background that we embossed and we did a little bit different stencil there. The flowers have solar paste on them but they don't have any embossing so they're just plain stacked flowers and I think this one turned out really good. Here's the final picture of it. So this card has the ink blended background. Then we used the stencil over the top, this possum stamps one that says happy birthday. I also added some Copic coloring with a little cupcake and a sentiment. But look at how awesome this looks up close. And it's hard to see the shimmer, but I used the perfect pearls on that backdrop and it does give it some nice shimmer. Let me show you the final picture so you can get the full effect. I really love how this card turned out. Okay, for the last two cards, I'm going to show you a little bit about how I created them just to let you know what I used because it's kind of a cool technique. I used the Waffle Flowers rectangle dies here and I cut out some black paper and then I made it just slightly larger than the other cutout I have right there so that it makes a nice frame. And you can do that with those dies. And then I'm gonna pop it up here so it kinda looks like it's raised up out of the middle. Looks really cool on the card. And remember the flowers that I used on here, I had also embossed these die cuts. I'm bending them a little bit just to give them a little bit more dimension, but then I'm going to layer them on top of each other. The leaves, I used the striped stencil on them, so this card has tons of cool stencil effects to it. On this fifth card, remember we had used solar paste and I wasn't quite sure if you could stamp or what you could do on top of solar paste. So what I ended up doing is I used my VersaFine Nocturne black ink and then I used some clear embossing powder and embossed it and it looks amazing. So here's a better look. This is the stencil we used over this. We colored some cute Copic little images that are from Possum Stamps as well. And then I stamped on top of the solar paste in VersaFine Nocturne and added some WOW embossing powder in clear over it. And it works perfect on this solar paste. I wasn't quite sure if it would cause any problems with the solar paste, but it looks great. So I think all of that turned out great. I hope that you enjoyed all of these tips and tricks. I worked really hard putting this video together. We made five different cards. I will make sure to put everything in chapters. If you haven't done it yet, make sure you hit the like and subscribe on the channel. We will be doing a stencil part three um, sometime in the future, so make sure you hit that and notifications. Also, if you are looking for any of these products today, make sure that you click through my affiliate links in the description. I would appreciate that so much. I will also put them in the pinned comment. Have a great day. Bye!